For more on the indictment of former President Trump, we go now to CBS legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. Good morning to you, Ricky. Uh, Rick, good morning. Can you hear me? Okay, good. I'm glad you can hear me. Can you walk us through it? We've never seen anything like this before, literally. So what are the next few days going to look like with this arraignment of the former president? We expect the president to fly into New York City on Monday night. And what will happen on Tuesday morning is he will emerge from his residence at Trump Tower. He may or may not speak at that time. But he will be in the custody of the NYPD and his own Secret Service. I expect that there will be a motorcade that will take him from Trump Tower down to the courthouse. And at the courthouse is also the district attorney's office. The NYPD, as well as the Secret Service, who will never leave him, by the way. They're not supposed to. He is within their protection, and it's really within their circle. So they go into the DA's office. He must be processed like any other defendant. What does that mean? He will get a picture taken, which becomes a mugshot. In New York, mugshots are not usually released to the public. He will also be fingerprinted electronically, and he will be given a booking number. At the time that he receives that booking number, he is officially, quote unquote, under arrest. He then must wait, as any other defendant would, for the fingerprints to go through the electronic process of review. They'll go up to Albany. They'll bounce back. Mm -hmm. That takes usually a couple of hours. Right now, we are told that the arraignment itself is set for 215. He is then in the custody of the court personnel, as well as his Secret Service people and the NYPD. I do not expect him to be handcuffed. He will be brought into the courtroom. The indictment will be unsealed. And for the first time, the defendant, Donald J. Trump, and his attorneys and the rest of us will learn what the charges are. Well, that's a great TikTok, Ricky, of what to expect. Uh, it seems the former president expects that he'll be able to hold a press conference that evening to discuss what happened back at his home in Florida. So can he expect to give that a uh, round of remarks, or uh, will there be some sort of gag order? Well, I think one of the things that the president, former president, ought to consider, since he does like to give speeches, is perhaps he'd rather give that speech before he goes to court uh, at Trump Tower. Once he goes to court, in addition to the question of bail, there will be no bail here. It's not an offense that demands bail. But there may be some conditions that either the district attorney's office wants or the judge himself wants. And if the judge himself or the DA decides that there should be conditions, they're simple ones like turning in your passport, perhaps reporting your, on your travel. But the real question here, in light of the potentially inflammatory continuing statements of Mr. Trump, that the judge or the DA may ask the judge to impose a gag order on Donald Trump, on his lawyers. If a gag order is in place, the judge can't stop him from speaking, period. But the judge can certainly stop him from in any way talking about the case. Okay. A gag order would go to both sides. Both sides would have to remain silent. Okay. So the former president would be able to continue to campaign, but not, in theory, talk about the details of the case. We'll see what happens. Ricky Clayman, uh, I know you'll be covering it. Thank you this morning. We'll be right back with a lot more Face the Nation. Stay with us.